Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Ridwanullah family. Welcome back to a new episode of Ridwanullah TV show. I'm your host, life and business maximizer, Hussein Mahmoud, working to help you completely maximize your life and business in this dunya and in the akhira for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Verily all praise and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, owner, and sustainer. The one who's worthy of all worship without any associates or intermediaries. And may the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon the most esteemed leader and most honorable teacher, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions, and those who follow him until the day of judgment. Allahumma ameen. That's probably the intro that you're kind of looking for. Um, so we have Liban Muhammad, mashallah, jazakallah khair for accepting my uh, request to interview you. Always, always, man. Alhamdulillah, I'm glad to be here. Jazakallah khair, jazakallah khair. So uh, just to kind of give you guys a little bit of background on uh, Liban, um, he's currently graduating high school, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Um, has a lot of ambitions, he's gotten into the speaking industry, we'll kind of talk about that a little bit. Oh man, got into that very deeply, thanks to this man. No, alhamdulillah. Um, also, he's he has entrepreneur as well, doing some side hustles here and there. Yeah, um, he likes barbering. Uh, I'm just trying to think about all the things that I could kind of give in a nutshell to let you know what this man is really about. Yeah, uh, very deep intellectual. Uh, mashallah, um, uh, has a lot of deep conversations and thoughts. Uh, from what I remember, he's telling me. Uh, you know, his friends kind of reach out to him for thoughts and wisdom, and hopefully, uh, that'll be something that we could yeah. share in this show, inshallah. Definitely, man. Alhamdulillah. Let's uh, let's get it started. Let's get it started. So, do you want to quickly uh, uh, say? Well, yeah, I guess I did inter yeah, introduce um, you. <laughs> Anything um, else you'd like to add on top of that? Well, um, my name is Liban Mohammed. Um, as I said right now, um, I'm from Seattle, Washington. Um, this is my older cousin, Hussein Mahmoud. Yeah. And I'm just glad. I've been waiting for this for too long. Too long. <laughs> you know, but, but the day finally came. The day finally came. I prayed for this. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah man. Let's get so, started. a lot of it, what we're going to be talking about is basically you graduating high school and um, a lot of the things that you've done so far in your life, both the failures and the success. Yeah. Uh, more focused on the success and whatever else we, you know, come up with, inshallah. Definitely, man. Let's, let's unravel me. Uh, hey. Let's do it. Uh, let's do cool. it. I'm ready. Um, yeah, because uh, we don't have anything specifically prepared. You know, it's just kind of going off the cuff, off of questions that I normally ask, you know, a lot of my, my guests, alhamdulillah, rabbil mm -hmm. Um So let's actually, where were you born? I was born in Cairo, Egypt, um, back in 2001. Mm -hmm. Literally, like uh, my mom, she she went to Egypt, like not to like during that year in two thousand one, um, with with some of the family, like my grandma, my cousin, uh, my uncle, uh, which was a previous guest of his, uh, Upshit, if you guys seen him. Yeah. Um, yeah, we were all just you know, we were all just there. Um, I was born like that year in October and and pretty much it was like it was a whole it was a whole big thing where when I was born it's like it's a crazy story behind it yeah alhamdulillah that's good um I'm, I'm a little bit laughing cause uh it's like no cause, cause the way <laughs> how we are the way how we are it's like it we, we like to bond and our bond is like it's crazy you know um especially like the way how we grew up just knowing Hussein as a young kid and just growing up and having this conversation with him now is just mind-blowing so it's like yeah. it's, a, it's a little bit funny to us but, but yeah because this is a normal thing because with with the other guests is more like this is the first time i'm talking to them in a long time yeah. but we normally chop it up and we talk we, we behind we the talk. scenes so I'm just kind of interested to see how this plays out. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I don't know why it took you so long, man. Uh, yeah, let's. 
No crease on the whites? Oh, no crease on the whites for two years, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Show them. Oh, no crease on the whites, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Air Forces. Air Forces. For the past two years, I take care of them. Mashallah. So you were born in Qatar, Egypt, and then you came to the United States. In September of 2003. And how old were you? Exact date. I was like a year and a half or two years and a half or something like that. Yeah, around there. Yeah, around there. Yeah, around there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I moved. Um, I had a whole, I had a whole like, it, it was kind of hard. We, we would have came to America earlier, but from what I hear is like that whole like 9-11, it was like literally a month after, uh, a month before I was born and it was like, it was kind of hard to come to America. Mm -hmm. Um, being like, and I came here as a refugee, um, and like knowing, like just knowing how, how hard it was to come to America and seeing where I am now is like, it's completely amazing, you know? Like in terms of what? In terms of like how far I've come and how far like mm -hmm. this whole family and how far we've come, you know? Yeah. Um, I... I wish I came to America a little earlier, but I'm glad. I'm glad, like, I'm, I stayed out there, even though I don't remember anything. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Uh, like, I, I, I don't, don't remember, remember anything. Much of the like, yeah, the stories that I hear, yeah, it's yeah. like, it's like, have you ever had, like, um, have you ever had, like, deja vu where it just hits you or, like, you feel, like, you know how, you know that feeling mm -hmm. some way? Like, you feel it some type, like, it's kind of. I feel like it's kind of like karma, where it, it might not happen now, mm -hmm. but you'll feel it later on. You know. Like so the thing is, like deja vu. Yeah, deja vu. Um, I, I look at it like, I look at it like that, mm -hmm. where, where it's like, I get, I get the pain and the struggle that that my mom and my parents and this like the whole family's been through. Yeah. And it's like, man hearing all these stories really gets you thinking about like when will this happen to me one day and it might happen sooner or later mm -hmm. but it will happen Is like in terms I, of negative or positive 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 like you you because when you're saying when for some reason i thought it was like the, something negative that probably nah, happened. it's a it's like how how you view it mm -hmm. and it's perspective is everything you know like how you how you view things is what you take from it. If if I look at it negatively, I'll take that negative from it. Right. But if I'm looking if I'm looking at it like towards towards the positive side and seeing like how they overcame that, yeah. I'm gonna start overcoming stuff. Right. I'm gonna do this. I'm going to do that. You know. Yeah. That's, that, that's pretty much how I look at it. That's pretty dope. So what's I'm actually interested in the stories. What which one comes to your mind right now? Um, okay, well And what's the lesson in it, if you could break that down for us and show It's inshallah. like um okay, the lesson okay, well the the, story here, here, here's here's one story. Here here's one story. Um yeah. from what I hear, uh, this is from what I hear. Um I was born um uh, around like I think seven or six or seven in the morning. And mm -hmm. For so long, like previously before I was born, um, my mom was like, my mom was like just going through so much. It's like it's her first child. Um, she, my my dad wasn't there. You know, he he came to America, um, and pretty much it was like my mom is struggling, and my grandma is trying to like help her out. Like um, my my grandma from my dad's side is trying to help her out. Um, they're, they're just really trying to like just have me and just go home but since we're in like a foreign country at that time it was like and probably to this day it's they they really just want money from you money is like everything in this world so they want money and seeing how seeing how like the struggle was my mom was supposed to have a c-section or she was supposed to have like one of, um, like some type of surgery uh, to have me. And they said that I wasn't breathing, um, things of that nature where where it's like, where it's like, man, uh, is she really gonna have me or not? Um, 
And the other thing was like my, uh, like when I was born, the doctor told my mom that I wouldn't be able to read correctly, understand math. Like I would be, uh, I would have like some special type of needs. Um, but look at me now. Uh, I don't. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Um, man, it's just, it's mind blowing, you know, um, seeing how far my mom has came. And when I look back at it now, I appreciate her even more. And especially since I don't live with her uh, at the time being, um, I really appreciate her more. And it's just like, oh man, like she did this for you, you know, and yeah. a lot of, like helped her with that. <coughs> um, grandma helped her with that. And so I appreciate them even more, you know. Yeah. And that's pretty much the lesson. Like don't don't take don't take what you have for granted. Understand where you come from and think about the story and try to reflect on it. That's pretty much what I would say. Sure, well, that's actually a timeless message, man. I the first time I heard about the, the doctor telling uh, my you know, your mom yeah. about that was the first time I heard that speech. So I never was very aware of that story, and then now I'm hearing that story about the, yeah, the like situation, the, like the rest of it. Yeah. yeah, and it's just it was crazy, you know. Um, <laughs> it's crazy. I don't remember it, but it was crazy, like how how everything went down. When she told me that story, she she kind of felt like a lot of emotions going through her, and mm -hmm. I and I sensed that. Yeah, yeah, it was just just like that and sometimes it's crazy to, to kind of sit back and, and reminisce not reminisce but kind of remember those stories you know yeah just remember them. and remember the lessons I mean you I feel like you take the lessons from it yeah you you can't really remember a lesson that that you don't remember at all you know right but if you or at least take the lessons from the stories yeah, you were told yeah, yeah take the lessons from the stories because yeah that, that's really all you got if you if you don't have uh, if you don't have like the full memory of it yeah, yeah. that's good because it reminds me to just you know instead of just going through these stories like take the like, der derive the lessons from it like you said appreciation that's yeah, appreciate it. one like, thing that I need to improve on myself uh, man, um, I got I got a lot to improve on too yeah I'm, I'm really just trying to like stay positive and like focused on what I need, you know. Yeah. Like live in the moment for once, and make sure and try to move forward too. Alhamdulillah. So that's kind of like your the, the the beginning of things. So let's fast forward to now. Now. What do you have going on? What are you up to? What are you? What are the things that you're working on right now? So as of now, um, I'm currently uh, still in high school. Um, even though this virus is still going on, uh, yeah. uh, I'm doing homeschool. Uh, I take an online class, uh, like two of them. Uh, I'm on my last quarter of high school. I'm really thinking about what I'm going to do when I get back to Seattle uh, soon enough. Yeah. Uh, I'm almost out of here. Um, That's maybe, crazy, man. It feels like you like just maybe came. something. Yeah, I've, I've been here for like a year and like I think three, four months. Um, and just time just flies. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I'm just thinking about what I want to do and exactly what am I going to do in college, you know? Like, what do I want to study? Yeah. At first I thought I knew, but I, I really don't because yeah. it's like you when you imagine something, have you ever heard, like, oh, that went better in my head? Yeah. Like, that, this goes better in my head. I'm not trying to do that. So try to see what your opportunities are and think about what you're good at, you know? Yeah. What are you good at? What do you like to do? And if you like to do that, go look for that in college. Mm. Or something very similar to it yeah. that you might even like. So I'm just really thinking about that. That's pretty cool, man. So finishing up school, going back to Seattle. Yeah, making plans, yeah, to go yeah. back to Seattle, yeah. For a little bit. Um, Man, it's crazy. The the, video, the the interview might be released by the time you're back there. Who knows? 
knows, who knows, man? Man, it's crazy. So let's say the what, what, what was the most successful thing that you've had recently? Recently, um, like what was so your biggest success rate right, most recent? So alhamdulillah, um, it's like my the speech that you were at. Mm, just at the capital. Yeah. So like putting myself out there and like leaving all the negativity back then and even though that there is still some negative things that go on throughout life yeah it's like what i want to do is just focus on the positive and what i did was i focused on the positive i looked at what i could do i write all the time and um i really just wrote wrote a whole speech try to put myself out there i go to the u uh, the University of Utah, like, I'm in a program there, I take, like, one class over there, and, and pretty much, I put myself out there, I talk to my advisor, uh, uh, Richard Kofusi, um, like, pretty much, when, when there's, like, opportunities like that, I never used to take them. Mm -hmm. I took it, and I got invited to, um, uh, DC. Um, like was that the, after like after you gave the speech or before? I got it was a it was like during the same time. It was okay, like, so kind of happened. I got the invited. Same time. I got invited to it, and I was like, okay, maybe, maybe let's see what else I could do. Yeah, you know. So I gave the speech, met more people. Yeah. And they're all connected. And these are like uh, people in high positions, like, like legislators. I met, I met the senator. I met. Yeah. Um, this was a big deal. This was a big deal to me, yeah. and, and it still is. You know, for sure. Uh, uh, I don't want to use was as a past tense, but yeah, uh, yeah, just pretty much like just getting getting my whole story out there. Well, yeah. not my whole story, just like a little uh, part of me, and an appetizer. I, yeah, like just just give me like a little sample like at Costco, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And just <laughs> hand it out to you. Yeah. And if I could just if I could just like reflect that yeah. towards me, I feel like I could do whatever I want to do. That's crazy, man. Uh, I remember telling you that you could become a like a, a really good speaker. I never I never really believed in that and then I told him to come to mind. He he did he had no clue. He had yeah. no clue about it. I call him up one day, um, he's driving home, or I think he was driving to work, um, he's on his way there, and it was like about 10, 15 minute call, um, he's like, oh, well, how are you doing, you know, our regular conversation, and then I tell him the good news, he was like, man, I always knew, and I don't know why you didn't do this sooner, so I was like, yeah, why didn't I? So I was just like thinking about it after the call. Hey, like, okay, I'll call you later. Bye. Uh, really, that's not how it ended, but I'll call you later. Um, and we'll talk some other time. Yeah. Um, and then pretty much just getting that, getting that whole feeling where somebody believed in you, and still does, and seeing where you can go with it is like, wow. Yeah, I really had no words for that. How'd you feel after the speech? Honestly, during and after, it was like, first of all, I feel like I think it went great because they wanted me to give the speech. I had to go pray. It was around door time. I was like, okay, yeah. no, 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 I can't go on right now. I got to go pray. Um, and they're like, okay, no, make it fast. No, I'm not going to make it fast. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pray for however long I want. I prayed, um, creased my shoes. Uh, <laughs> the ones or no? Uh, no, no, no. It was, uh, it was these uh, loafers, loafers. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's not the point. Um, yeah. So I, I prayed. I went. I went to the podium and I started talking. And they're like, you know, everybody's just recording. Some people are recording me. Some people, a lot of everybody's listening. Um, the senators and all of them, uh, the legislators, they come out. Uh, like on the balcony, just watching me. And this is at the Capitol. Um, I felt like my my whole body, I didn't even know where I was. 
my mouth is just talking <laughs> and my mind is somewhere else. Everything's kind of frozen in time but, almost. Yeah, so I was like, what's going on? Literally, like, it's like you're playing or like you're just talking to yourself in your head, but you're talking in real life. So I never knew, like most people say, uh, multitasking is not, is not real, like it's impossible. Your brain only focuses on one thing. Yeah. I guess I defined the odds then, but I was just talking and my mind is somewhere else. What's going on? And then I see Hussein just recording me. Yeah, I came in right when you started. Yeah, right when I, right when I started, yeah. he just, he showed up. I was like, man, perfect timing. Yeah. When I left, and w now when I look back at the video, I'm like, wow. Did I really just do that? This one lady, um, she she started crying. She yeah, started that's crying. what I had in my mind. Is like the speech was so powerful, people start getting teary eyed, and then when I walked around, yeah. and you're talking to that lady. Yeah, she uh, she uh, we exchanged contacts. Um, I met. I don't know if you guys know this guy. Um, like a lot of these people just wanted to take a picture with me. Like I didn't even know them. They don't know me, mm -hmm. but. Once they got a taste of who I am, yeah, and just what I what, what I am about, they started uh, inviting you to certain places yeah, to give speeches, right? So I was like, "What <laughs> is going on?" Yeah. You know, um, I turned two down. Um, yeah, you missed the big shot already. Yeah, so, huh? so, so I turned two down. <laughs> what you doing? And, um, uh, only you took two speeches, two speaking engagements now, bro. Who's in? I I don't have a license. Uh, I, I'm really like, I'm not trying to take a bus everywhere. Oh, my fault, my fault. Or ask for a ride. Where, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, I see. So I'm just like, um, <laughs> so I'm just like, <laughs> I see. <laughs> no, so I was just like, man, I don't know if I should take that. But the biggest one was where. Um, this lady from Park City, right? Yeah, this lady from Park City. Um, but the biggest one was, um, it was this, oh, UNICEF. So UNICEF, mm -hmm. like, I'm I'm with this whole group. Uh, we all got invited. Um, they paid for our tickets and everything. But per me personally, what they did was they they emailed me and and they called up uh, the advisor and and one of the, and this one guy that that runs the program. So pretty much they call him up. They tell him to they tell him to like get me into it. Um, all, all I have to do is just like volunteer at certain places, talk talk about certain things, and then I could get myself out there. Then they were like, you could possibly get a job with, them, with UNICEF. So I was like, if I get a job with them, I might not even go to college, mm -hmm. you know, because that job is so good. But then I was like, oh, you know, college like a salary good. position, a salary position, mm -hmm. but it didn't happen. No, at least not yet though. Yeah. Like, I'm, uh, they postponed the they postponed the conference uh, due to this virus. Um, um, but inshallah, like they're telling us like September or something. And yeah, that's that's pretty much like it was mind blowing. They they invited me to a whole dinner yeah. like around midnight or something. I don't know who had dinner at that time, but <laughs> you know, um, yeah. So they invited me to that. And just and just to talk to me and everything and just see just see what I could do. That's pretty dope, man. So it's like, what what were the main takeaways from that success that you've had? The main takeaways from that was that if you if you like if you could really just adapt and get yourself out of that comfort zone. Yeah. If you could just get yourself out of a comfort zone. I feel like you can do whatever you what you want, or whatever you like, whatever you, your dream is. Mm -hmm. Then, like, just really, like, just really, like, opening your eyes and realizing that you could do whatever you need. And once you once you get out of that comfort zone, you really just adapt to people. You meet more people. You will make more connections, and me personally, I feel more happier mm -hmm. because it's like when you feel like you did something good, good or bad, 
when you feel when you did something bad, you can uh, you might brush it off, or you might like just reflect on that a lot and regret yeah. it. But when you did something good, you will stay happy the whole time. Right. When you do something like good, or at least something that makes you happy, mm-hmm. you always feel good about it. And I feel like that's one thing that I'm most passionate about. You know, um, just really connecting with people and making that whole connection. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Like just opening your eyes and and really getting out of your comfort zone. What's the biggest failure you've had most recently? Um, the biggest failure I had was so. I personally didn't really go to school like that. I went to school. During high school, I was like, well, I'm still in high school, but mm-hmm. during like my freshman, sophomore year, and a little bit of my junior year, um, I, I used to like leave, never really went. I used to always go out. Um, hang out with the boys? Hang out with, yeah, hang out with my friends. Um, so it's just certain people um, get into a lot of fights, um, you know, just just really like not go to school at all, you know, and and seeing and seeing where where like where my life has gone, like I lost a lot of things where I'm like, man, uh, that could have been you, uh, that could have been you that time, that could have been. Like, why are you doing this? I never really liked the person I seen in the mirror, you know, for so long. Mm-hmm. And and seeing how far, like, seeing how far I've come is really, like, it's really mind-blowing to me, you know? Like, you guys, you could have done this a long time ago. Yeah. Um, I don't know why you didn't do it. But I feel like, you know, your mistakes set you up for success. If you just... If your you mistakes set you up for your success. Because you're gonna learn from them. Yeah. You you like you're basically just learning from all your mistakes. If you don't repeat them, then you're learning from it. You're just gonna keep growing. Right. And like if I if right now, um, let's say, let's say you slipped over here, and you learned from it. Like you slipped, are you gonna go slip again? Give or take, most likely not, depending on the situation. No, but like you know where it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Spot. Yeah, that's spot right here. here. And then you slip. Yeah. Are you gonna walk back again? Right. Right into the same thing when you yeah, say right no. Back absolutely not. Yeah. So it's like you're learning from it, and you're just gonna keep growing from that. Yeah. If you know what something is, you're not, and you know that it's bad, you're not gonna do that. But if you know that there's something good, you're just gonna keep growing and growing and escalating in life. Yeah. So it's more of like a lot of. Decisions that led you to the wrong. Yeah, it's like areas, hanging out with like the wrong people, yeah. um, doing the wrong things, yeah. uh, just just really like not knowing and being dumb. Uh, like you know, we I was just a young dumb kid, you know, like yeah. I, I wouldn't say dumb, but it was like just a, I dumb, dumb decisions. decisions. Yeah, dumb yeah, decisions. Yeah. 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 So what's the what what are the main takeaways from that? Like what did you learn from that? Because I like the fact that you mentioned, yeah, yeah, I've been through this, but you kind of refocused on your success, which was was you know pretty dope. Because a lot of people, yeah. So I always try know. to like um, look at the positive of things. Like there's always a brighter side of life, you know. Yeah. Um, what I learned is if you. Like, like if I could just go back and tell my past self um, that there is like a brighter side, and if if I could just do this, I learned not to focus on the ifs, because if is like it's not real. Mm-hmm. If is just a possibility, but you know, if I, unless you take that chance, obviously I can't go back in time, but. Don't focus on the ifs. Focus on like what I could do. Like, what do I want to be? Just as long as you focus on the positive, stay positive. You know, like, and always keep calm is what I always tell people. Like, don't don't panic. Don't don't get frustrated. I personally just hold everything in, but 
I'm I'm always like I always have a straight face. I won't I won't go out of my way to like, oh man, like all this is happening to me. Uh, no, no, mm -mm. no, don't do that. Just keep calm. As long as you keep calm, and and mainly if you have like faith in all, in God, whether what whether the um oh man hold up. whether the religion you are you know I because I respect all, and as Muslims we all should, um, as long as like you have faith in whoever you believe in. Whoever, whatever you believe in, keep keep that faith and always hold on to it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's actually <laughs> in the danger zone because you can't. I guess let's talk about that because because yeah. if 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 somebody believe is not whatever you believe in, that's like more of what uh, the non-Muslims say because they believe that whatever you believe in, you should believe in it. But as Muslims, we only believe in Allah, and we know that yeah. the, that's the right way. So by like, saying whatever you like, believe in, like honestly, like I was just like you know, um, not trying to like discriminate. No, we can respect, yeah, but respect, but, but at the same time, you know, that. not believe in what they believe in. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, no, I get what you mean. Yeah, uh, it's just like just respect, just respect, like yeah. everybody, you know. Because I've, I've heard a lot of the, the speakers, they you know, whenever they speak, that's what they mention. It's like, you know, you believe whatever you believe in and believe in that. You know what I mean? But, for example, let's say if somebody believes that uh, Jesus is the Son of God, we can't be like, you know, believe in that. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. But we still respect. You respect them? We respect them, you know? Okay. But we don't respect them for what they believe in because it's not correct. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas, if non-Muslims say something like that, they believe that because they don't believe that you know there's one straight path to Jannah. Yeah. It, like I feel like what you're trying to say is like, like there's multiple ways of that. Yeah. Like, like there's the, a right or wrong. Ways. Yeah. Yeah. We respect them for who they are, but we don't respect the belief in what they believe in. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I just, because I, I just wanted to take that as an opportunity for us to kind of learn about that, because yeah. I, I get what you're saying, though. Like yeah, in no, terms I, of I was like, just, just have respect for everybody, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, that was pretty much it. Alhamdulillah. That's good, and I think it's it's a good, good opportunity for all of us, you know what I mean? Just to kind of yeah. Uh, ponder on that. Um, okay, so let's say you came up this, to this point, a, a mm -hmm. senior in high school. Yeah. Um, with all the stuff that you've been through, knowing that somebody, let's say, is a couple of years behind you, up to five years or so, mm -hmm. what are the advice that you would give somebody in that particular situation to, to help them successfully um, go through uh, finishing high school? Like, Okay, depending on what, like, how, like, what they've been through? Just in general, like, a, a general advice to somebody that's, go, like, on the path to, fin like, they let's say starting high school or, you know, on their journey to finishing. Like, what, 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 what would be good advice for them like, to remember to help them succeed? What I would always tell them is, like, you know, like, if you know who you are as an individual, you know yourself better than anybody else. Yeah. You know? So, and you know, like, the people that you are around, because you are a product of your environment, you know? That, you know? Like, that's personally what I believe. If you are from a specific environment, you're a product of that. Yeah. And you're the one that can define that. If you, just be yourself. Just be yourself. If you could just be yourself and not try to be something that you're not, and and really, like, just, really just focus on what you want then you'll succeed is what I believe and is where I would like mention to mention to the younger people okay well younger than me yeah yeah <laughs> cause you're still a baby is quote unquote <laughs> it's what they say yeah I don't know
So Alhamdulillah, what about for those who are older than you? What, what would your advice be to them? I mean, <laughs> and nothing personal. I see, 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 like that's actually kind of funny. Um, I always group around. I call them old heads. Um, yeah. Like Hussein would be one. Um, like when I when I say that, it's not like say it again. old, but it's like <laughs> um, it's like I grew up around him. Like I think you were like thirteen when I was um, when I was like starting school. Probably. Yeah, so around that age. Nobody knows my age, bro. Don't put it out there. Okay. I'm just not messing with <laughs> No, no. We're just around that age. Um, just around that age and pretty much like... I grew up around that. I'm, I'm used to that. Um, what I would tell them is... Understand, and, and especially if they have kids, like... Understand that... That's... Like you, you guys grew up in two different times, you know, and it's and either if you are from like whether you are from uh, like another foreign country or if you're from or if you were actually raised here, that's even better if you're raised here. If you have kids out here, then you get to, then you get to know. Like inshallah, when I have kids, um, I know I know like I don't know everything, but. I know like what to dodge, you know? Like try to keep your, like if you could just connect with your kids and be close to them and just connect. And if you don't have kids, like connect with whoever is the y younger version of you. Like, okay, not younger version. Let me let me rephrase this. Like like your younger sibling or like your niece, your nephew or somebody that's, that's younger than you. Yeah. If you could just connect with them and at least talk to them here and there, I feel like the world would be a better place. And everybody would be much happier. You know, more more connections will be made, more um, more like, more people would connect with each other and be happier. You would see more smiles, not, not frowns or, uh, like, like pretty much, no frowns. Uh, you, uh, people would stay more positive. Yeah, and that and I feel like that's a debatable question, but that's really what I believe. Alhamdulillah. So when, what are you looking forward to? I am. <laughs> exactly. Huh? I'm looking forward to leaving this place. Soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll try not to take that personal. No, it's, <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not like. It's just for me personally. It's like. I'm not used to, I mean, yeah, I lived in Utah for a bit, but I'm not used to this place. And mm -hmm. I grew up in Seattle where I know I know where everything is. I don't know a lot of places. Like me, my schedule is like, I'm barely at home, but either I'm, I'm either at school or I'm working. Mm -hmm. So I come home just to sleep. So it's like, it's really boring to me, so I'm like, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't. If I was out there, I could like at least hang out with a couple of my friends. I, I barely see you, but we talk more on the phone than we see each other. Yeah. So yeah, it's like, can't wait to leave. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Um, college. Um, mm -hmm. college is the first thing. Like, I, if you guys don't already know, um, well, most of you guys don't, but. The people that know me, I was in Running Start. I was uh, I was a Running Start student where I went to a community college for like about a month um, at Highline. Um, it, it's in Seattle, so pretty much like I went there. I already, I already got a feel of college, and I go to the U right now where I do take a couple classes when they teach you like how to how to prepare yourself for college, and mm -hmm. the program does too. So. I'm just like, I'm just really like trying to see what what college has to offer me next, you know? Yeah. What does it have to offer? Let's see. That that's really. Oh, and my mom, and my mom. I haven't I haven't seen her in a while. Uh, yeah. Last time she came here, I was I didn't even enter a car with her. Um, yeah. I'm really just like trying to go see her, uh, see my little sister. Uh, my brother, and like, uh, if you
you guys don't already know, his his, his mom and uh, the rest, they all live out there. So I just can't wait to see them and see a lot of my friends, you know? So looking sure. forward to that. Sure. What are your Dean goals? My Dean goals are, as of now, um, so I'm not, I learned not to try to, I'm not trying to fake anything, especially with Ramadan coming up. Damn. Uh, like less than a month. Yeah, it's like, it's kind of what's coming up like this. Um, so what I'm really trying to do is, I'm trying to pray more. Um, those are my Dean goals. Um, and especially with this time off, since school is out, um, not out, but it, it's like cancer, mm -hmm. homeschool it's type of situation. Yeah, homeschool type. Yeah. Um, so I've been praying more, um, trying to trying to read more Quran. Um, I do listen to a lot of lectures, um, and just trying to see everybody's perspective. Yeah. Because somebody could say something else, and somebody could say this, and they both could be true, but I like to I like to go dig deep dig deep into it because I'm a I'm a big skeptic like what does this mean I want to know what it means you mm -hmm. know so things like that I'm just trying to like be closer to a lot where I could I could feel at least like warm inside you know what I'm saying because for so long I was like man You're just uh, that empty praying yeah like praying I never really used to pray and honestly like I'm not even gonna lie. Uh, I know this is not a good thing, but I do miss prayers here and there. But I always try to make it up. And you know, we all we all have something to work on. And if we could just focus on prayer, it, like if we could just pray five times a day, you know, that would be your your life would be better. Everything would fall into place. At least you know, like just keep praying. As long as you keep that faith with Allah and have and have that one on one with him every time, five times a day, then things will be great. Sure. That sounds, sounds good, good, man. It's good to be honest because every like you said, everybody has something to work on. Everybody has something to work on. We could all try to be we can all try to look like we're perfect, but in reality it's different. Yeah. Okay, so um, we're in the final lap of the interview, so I'm going to be asking you a couple more like closing questions in a way or headed towards there. Mm -hmm. So when you look at what, what are your biggest life goals? Like what do you, what, and, and, and what do you genuinely want to achieve? Like, mm -hmm. So when you look at the grand scheme of things. Yeah, okay. Um, so for so long it was like I wanted to get married. And yeah. I, I, I used to talk to Hussein about this, you know, um, all the time. That's why I asked you about that ring you had. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, when did uh, you get no. married? Yeah, <laughs> I, I just bought this. It was on sale. Um, uh, you know, it was a nice one. There's no woman behind that sale, right? Uh, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Um, but, uh, but pretty much it was like, oh, for so long I wanted to get married. Um, for so long I wanted to move out, you know, get my own place, do this. And even in college, like, I'm, I was thinking about getting a dorm. But... That's, I mean, obviously, inshallah, I will get married soon. Um, inshallah. Maybe not soon. Eventually. Uh, eventually. Yeah, eventually. That's the word. That's the word. Um, eventually soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. so I'm trying to get, um, well, my biggest goal right now is just to finish college. My biggest life goals are to finish college because I don't want my kids filling in that bubble where it's like, those applications in school where they give you, are you, are you, um, is your guardian or parent, um, have they, what's their education level? Yeah. For so, every time, I always had to fill out less than a high school diploma. Like, our parents, they came from a country where they ran away from war, and, and yeah, like, I get that. I get why they, why they didn't finish it. But, since I have this opportunity now, I don't want my kids filling in that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't want my kids filling in that. So at least like fill in fill in um a bachelor's degree. I was gonna say masters, but then I was like, ah, I'm okay, I'm okay. But bachelor's degree, you know? Yeah. Uh fill that in. Um that's pretty much why I'm why I'm in school because I honestly do not like school. And like other people could back me up on this. It's like, 
why am I in there? Why am I doing this? You know? But, you know, I just don't want I just don't want my kids having to do that. Yeah. Inshallah. Um and then one other goal would be like getting my own place, you know, uh going to Hajj. Uh I'm trying to go. Maybe not be bold, but um <laughs> inshallah go to Hajj. Um <laughs> go to Hajj. Um and pretty much it's like what I wanna do is I wanna own like as he said in the beginning, I'm a I'm a barber. Um, I'm trying to open up a shop myself. Mm-hmm. Open up a clothing line too. Uh, just a clothing store where I sell sneakers. Um, like just like brands like hoodies, um, like jeans like this. Maybe a couple of clothes, but uh, pre- pretty much like actually they'll go good you know? together, man. Like opening up a whole business. Having you know? a, having a barber shop and then you can go shopping. Yeah, within like, the same situation. Well, may- maybe not the same area, but like just opening up a store. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I honestly would wasn't thinking that, but inshallah, soon enough, um, yeah. I'm opening up a store in about the um, probably by the end of the year, or m- maybe not opening up a store yet, but probably but just starting that journey, like opening, like making, investing in myself, like investing in my own business where. Yeah. I'm selling clothes, um, making, having partners and stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, but inshallah, probably in the next uh, year or two, I'm going to open up a whole store. I won't tell you guys the name yet, but um, inshallah, soon enough, when Hussein invites me to another interview. Um, Hopefully by I'll then you'll have all that popping off. Yeah, inshallah. Inshallah. I'm trying to get that out there. Yeah, but those are my main goals, you know? Yeah. Um, opening all that. That's pretty good, man. I was actually uh, I was watching this uh, this little clip about this guy in Detroit making about two hundred and eighty k from a salon. From a salon. Yeah. Yeah, lo- like. But I think women have like a lot more things, so the the the, oh, the yeah. price is like ten, maybe three times more than it's what the what the regular barbershop is. It's mind blowing. Yeah. It's, it's mind-blowing. But I mean. Uh, that's kind of the, the trajectory and the potential, you know, probably yeah. even more than that, depending on what your goal is. My goal is $10 right now. Uh, <laughs> it's like, uh, uh, but, um, but yeah, like, I, I feel like money, yeah, money is good, but when you do something that you like or when you, that you're passionate about it, you feel more happier, you know, and then you, the fact that you're getting money out of it, it makes, it makes your day even more, Yeah. You know? I do barbering because that's what I like to do. I could do, I could be I could work in an office behind the desk and say that and it could be the best job in the world, but I'm not happy. I yeah. can make the most money, but I'd rather be happy than have. Well, I'd rather be happy and still make my money. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, uh, I don't know. Let, let me just sort this puzzle out. What am I trying to say right now? Yeah. Alhamdulillah, yeah. it's it's definitely an interesting point about passion and, and pay. Yeah. So we figured that out. Um so <laughs> oh, yeah. let's say uh two when you look at your life obviously you you've been through a lot, you've succeeded a lot, you yeah. um saw a lot and went through things that most people cannot even fathom. You know, and that's the story for everybody, but everybody has a unique story of their own. Mm-hmm. So when you're looking at your whole life up until this point, what's the happiest time of your life? What's been like the most happiest the most time? Happiest, yeah. um, happiest time of my life was which one comes to mind quick? No, because I'm thinking about like I, w- I was thinking about the future for a bit, mm-hmm. and then I was like. Yeah, because I was thinking about graduation, and I was like, "It hasn't right. happened yet." Yeah, the the happened. virtual so, graduation with this whole Corona mess. <laughs> no, don't do me like that. Man. <laughs> don't do me like that. Um, no, but I'm trying to like. Uh, I'll be, I'm just trying to reflect. But what would yours be? You just gonna flip it on me like that? I, uh, no, give me some time to think, man. All right, <laughs> think it through. <laughs> two, two more seconds. Uh, uh, Five foot three to one. Bing, you want to call a lifeline or something? 
Uh, <laughs> what up, man? My head's on fire. <laughs> Don't overthink it. Like, what, what, what's a time period in your in your life so far that you're like, man, that was a happy time in my life? Oh, okay. okay. That I guess maybe that's another okay, way to frame okay, it. Okay, okay. Um, so, hearing that I'm gonna graduate. Okay. So you found a way to connect it to your past. Yeah. So I was like, a little clever. Okay. You know. uh, So it's like, when I heard that, uh, for so long, like nobody believed I could do that. My dad, my mom, nobody believed I could do it, or or I was gonna do it. Um, There's a better way to uh, phrase that, but it's like, it's like when I heard that, when my counselor said, "Yeah, you're gonna graduate," but the funny thing was, she was like. Your diploma is not going to say the school's name. It's going to say the district's name. Personally, I don't care whose mm-hmm. name is on it. As long as it's my name, the principal's signature, whoever else is signing it, because mm-hmm. I never had it. Well, whoever else is signing it, and all that, you know? So I'm just trying to, like, the la- like the lady is, my counselor is telling me, oh, yeah, um, so, yeah, you're on track to graduate. And I was happy. <clears throat> my head like I have a straight face just talking to her mm. I leave I jump so high that I hit the ceiling it's not as high as this or maybe yeah. maybe it is I don't know we're sitting down but yeah. um yeah so it was like it was like man and this lady was like what, what are you so happy about why are you jumping around I'm graduating yeah, it's a big I, deal. I, I try not to show people my emotion yeah. but I just keep it in. But then sadly, uh, no, well, but there's like an upside to this. It's um, Here's the downside though. I get, a, I get a letter in the mail where it says, you are not on track to graduate. Mm-hmm. I was mad. I was like, what? what, what after what? the like, meeting? It was like mo- uh, two months after. Oh, okay. Recently though. So she gives me the letter. Um, I get the letter in the mail. And I threw it. I didn't rip it or anything. I just threw it in my room. I put it in my closet because I was cleaning and rearranging stuff that day. Uh, it was like a couple days later. I'm like, okay, let me just read it. You know, you, you, all you saw was you're not on track. Yeah. Let me just, what do you have to do? You just have to take a test. And I'm like, oh, like a graduation requirement test. And I'm like, okay, um, I go. Uh, the week of, um, I go and take the test, passed it fully, like nothing wrong. And and then she told me that, but for some reason I didn't feel like all that joy, you know? Because mm-hmm. the first time, it's like, have you ever done something the first time, it's, it's like, it's more fun. Yeah, yeah. And, and the second happy. time, around. the second time is like, ah, oh, no. I already, I already got that. You know, I already, yeah. I already know what it is. You know, it's like hearing a joke many times, but you hear it once, you hear it twice. You're not gonna laugh as much. Yeah. You know, you're not gonna be as happy. So I was like, but that's probably that's one of the happiest things that you've had in your life. That, yeah. That you can. It, it was like, man, it was crazy. You know. Oh, and and getting accepted into um, Central Washington University. Um, I know. That, it's not it's not a big achievement, but um, getting into like the community colleges that I wanted, um, but getting into like an actual university <coughs> is like a big thing because yeah. I didn't believe that I could get in, you know, with the GPA that I have. Yeah. From previous years, not my senior year, but from previous years, I was like, man, you know, Alhamdulillah, uh, I got into it. Yeah. Um, my uncle, uh, my uncle was happy. Uh, sure. He didn't like. He, he was like, "Man, I always knew you could do it." And you know, just just seeing where I could go right now, and and getting a couple scholarships too. Inshallah. So that's kind of like the 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 you know the happiest moment of your life. Let's flip yeah. that and say, what was the most unhappiest moment of your uh, life? So it's. It's someone that I call my brother, but he's he's not like he's not related to any of us. Yeah. Um, but he's like family to me. Um, 
and so it's like okay so pretty much what happened was one night I was I was always out I was never really at home I left the house um, I drove we were on the way to to like a little like a spot uh, in another state like in Oregon um, we were downtown it was me and him we're driving and I stopped at a gas station stopped at a gas station uh, we were gonna buy such and such items a couple, couple drinks Um, pretty much it was like he's still in the car he's still in the car I get out of the car I go um, and buy the stuff and I go to pay the guy like for the gas too uh, I go and pay him um, I go and pay him he's still in the car he's on his phone chilling he goes out does his thing, but then these guys pull up on him, and I'm still in the store. I don't know what's going on. I I get the story. I see all this stuff off the cameras because they're like, I was like, what happened? That's uh, I stayed back. Um, what happened was it was like a drive by. He was shot. Car. It wouldn't move. I was stuck there uh, for a while. I went to the hospital with him. They tell me the whole thing after. They show me the video. I call his mom. She tells me this and that. I tell her she rushes over here. Um. Pretty much like that whole that whole night was it was like the most scariest and the worst night of my life. Cause I was literally like, oh thank you to the guy at the gas station. I opened the door and all I hear is pop pop pop. I threw everything down. Ran over to him. He was like all in pain and everything try to get him up, put him in the car. The car wouldn't move. Get him out. It was just the worst night of my life. I never really told anybody that story. Like, Hussein was one of them, but I don't ever tell anybody that story. Um, it takes a lot, you know, to open up. Um, yeah. The thing is, it was like, what, what I told his mom was that this lifestyle is like, I'm a change. I'm a change, you know? <coughs> yeah. I told my mom that. She doesn't know this story either. But I told my mom that. I told my mom that, I, that I'm going to change and everything. That's why I'm out here. To better my life and just to get the help that I need. And just put myself out there for once, you know? Yeah. And see where I could go with it. So everything that I'm doing is like it's for certain reasons but we were we were supposed to finish high school together and I wasn't going to but he was on the road for it. I'm gonna I'm trying to finish the road and and just finish where we started. That's, that's pretty much that was like the worst time. Man, that's some it's a little different hearing it again. Um, and it's, um but Man, that's, that's definitely a lot to go through up until having even graduated high school, but yeah. I think that prepares you to be stronger in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Um, oof. Nah, but alhamdulillah, man. We're, we're good. Inshallah, I still carry on. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. I'll talk to his mom here and there. Um, yeah. You know, just, just keep that whole thing connected. Alhamdulillah. So the last set of questions, I'll ask you three questions and then end it up with the final one. 
uh, what is, let's say today was your last day. Um, and you only had three advice of the best advices that you've seen that, that you've experienced so far in your life and that's all you're going to leave with your loved ones what would they be? Okay, so just give you give give my loved ones advice? The, the best three advices you can give Okay. To, to your loved ones or whoever your friends or whatever so the first thing that came to mind was well, my dad told me, and my father told me that in this world, you either you either live like a lion or you live like a rat. Mm. Where I take that as you either are gonna like know who you are and know where you stand to better yourself, or you're just gonna go around and and try to just keep running in circles and circles where when you're a lion you know the whole field you know what you're doing yeah so Try be a lion like that. basically yeah like know who you are you know yeah um the other piece of advice is that is that make the most of this you know this this world that we have like try to make the most of it if you if you could really just take the time out of your day and connect with the, your loved ones, you're still getting touched. You know, like you are connecting with the loved ones. You you are like having a good time with them. It's like yeah. a win win. Yeah, just connect with them. Um, and lastly, the biggest thing is keep your faith strong with Allah. Like have that have that moment with Him. Um, Go to the masjid, go to lectures, read Quran, you know, do such and such so that, uh, do these things so that you don't have to regret it later on in the afterlife, you know? That was solid, man. MashaAllah, last question, what is, what does the pleasure of Allah mean to you? Ridwan Allah, what does that mean to you? Uh, what, what that means to me, the pleasure of Allah would be if you. Uh, let me just uh, let me think about this real quick. Understanding that Allah is your. Allah is everything. And He should be everything in your life. We should work towards. We should work towards pleasing Allah. We should work towards connecting with Allah. We should work towards making ourselves better because when you when you remember Allah, Allah remembers you. And every time we make a connection and every time we make an every time we make a connection with him and fully and fully like repent through whatever we've done whatever we have done like you you feel you feel much better you like once you learn more about your deen the better your life is you know if you could just do that and and make and make more connections with Allah and understand that he is everything to you that's that's what I believe the definition is from me Jazakallah khair call him Lee man of the hour yeah, he calls me Lee, but <laughs> no family does. Don't do that. I appreciate do that. that, man. Don't um, mention that in the comments. Yeah, yeah <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair for the opportunity, man. Yeah, uh, Alhamdulillah. It's definitely a privilege. It kind of went into different uh, stories and a yeah, lot of yeah. new things and some of the things that you've been through and some of the successes. So yeah, just want to say I'm proud of you, man. Uh, oh, thank you, man. You came a long it was way. It's good to hear that. Yeah, it was good, man. It's, it's good to kind of see somebody, mashallah, that's young, still giving deep wisdom. Oh, man. So, like, like I said, I grew up around old heads. Yeah. <laughs> I grew up around old heads. And yeah. I, I feel like I kind of know the field. Alhamdulillah. You know? Not fully, Alhamdulillah. but inshallah, I will. Alhamdulillah. You know, you, you got a bright future. You just got to, uh, you know, take take it one step at a time and, yeah. and do the right things the right way, inshallah. 
But I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to what your future looks like, man. And I'm pretty yeah, sure it's bright. Sure. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it so for you, uh, the family, Ameen. everybody else, Ameen. inshallah. Ameen. So that's Ameen. pretty much it, man. Jazakallah khair. Thank you, Brad. Ali, uh, Liban, Muhammad. Uh, you guys heard about his story. Um, I'm pretty sure that especially the youngsters and everybody else, uh, there's a lot of things that we can relate to. Um, and a lot of wisdom, a lot of uh, things that he's been through and that he shared with us um, that, that'll, that'll resonate with me. Uh, so, Jazakallah khair once again. Um, so that's pretty much it. Jazakallah uh, uh, khair. Don't forget to like this uh, video if you liked it. Uh, make sure that you um, subscribe, leave a comment, and uh, share it with your family and friends. That'll be greatly appreciated. Jazakumullah khair, Ridwanullah family, for another for tuning into a new episode of the Ridwanullah TV show. Um, and until next time, completely maximize your life and business in this dunya and in the akhirah for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.